Mm. Ah, good coffee. Hey, good morning. Russ here. Welcome back to the shop. Uh, today I want to talk about Ryobi battery banks. Now, first off, you're going to hear two terms going back and forth here. And I may accidentally say one when I mean the other. This is a, a power pack. And a, what I'm going to talk about today is a battery bank. And what a battery bank is, is where I take multiple Ryobi batteries. And I'm going to set them all up on a tray. Hook them all up in parallel. So that I'm still getting out of the plug-in 18 volts. But by hooking them all up in parallel, I increase the load that I can get out of my battery. Because now I'm running four batteries, draining them all at the same time instead of just one. So you can take a 5 amp battery, put four of them together, and you end up with 20 amp hours instead of just 5 amp hours. So we're going to take that principle, and I'm going to turn this battery pack into a power battery pack. Something that I can really run for a very long time. I can't. That won't increase the output. This thing is a 200 watt power pack. If I built one that's a 600 watt one, which I intend to do, that will still only put out 600 watts no matter how many batteries I plug into it for the battery source to give it its power. All the battery banks will do is increase the amount of time you can run the power pack. Um, a quick example is, let's say that I plug one battery in here and I run this thing and I run a CPAP machine for two hours. And I'm not saying that I can, I don't know. But for principal purposes, I can run it for two hours on the battery. That means that through the night, I have to get up every two hours and change out that battery so that I can go all night using a CPAP or a fan or whatever I'm using. If I take a battery bank and hook up four of them together, and then I plug that into here instead of just a single battery, this now it will run that CPAP for the eight hours straight through without disturbing me. So the idea behind a battery pack is that I can increase the amount that I get out of this thing uh, as far as how long it'll run before it runs dead. The other advantage of something like this over the normal uh, power station units out there like Jackery or RockPal is with this system, if you have enough batteries in the background, if you have a way to charge them up, you can be charging batteries while you're using them. So when your batteries run down, you just grab more batteries, plug them back into it, take the other ones, and start charging them. You keep them rotated so I can use this thing continuously instead of having to wait to, for it to charge up so I can use it again. That's the problem with most of these small jackeries in these small uh, units is you can't use them while they're charging. And so, and dollar for dollar... I got around $50 wrapped up in this thing. I have my batteries, but I use them in the shop anyway. So having these batteries to be able to use it on this when I'm not using it in the shop is just means I'm multitasking them. So let me show you real quick how you can hook up to put together a battery pack, a battery bank um, to be able to run any power pack that I make any Ryobi power pack. Now I am making another power pack as you know. I, I'm calling that a power unit and I'm using some 35 amp 12 volt SL, SLA batteries for that system and that's going to be a completely enclosed system all to itself that will do everything this will do but it will do it a lot more. I think that thing is going to have like a thousand watts to it. So, but that's a different unit. I think I did a couple of videos where I started doing that. But right now, we're talking about Ryobi only. So, a Ryobi battery pack will run off of these Ryobi battery banks without any problem. So, to hook one up is very simple. So, I have this simple diagram here. I have a plug-in here. And it's just going to be a two-prong plug-in. It's going to have to be able to run some amps through it. So I don't know which plug-in I want. I've been trying to find one. So if you know where I can get just what I'm looking for, all help is appreciated. But I want this thing to be unusual in one way. I would love to find a plug-in that I put my two wires in. I put a female on the panel right here so that if I don't plug the battery in here, I can plug the battery bank in here instead to get of its power. But I want that plug to be stackable. So if I have that four and that six, um, two different battery banks, I can actually plug one in on top of the other and plug them both into here. And then I would have 10 batteries of, 
of battery storage running my unit instead of just six or just four. I should be able to get them together in parallel by plugging one on top of the other. So I'm looking for a particular type of plug-in so I don't have to have a male and female plug-in on my battery bank. It would make it a little easier. But that's the idea. It actually, I think it's going to work very simple. It'll be very simple to make. And it'll give me the option of running this thing off of one battery, off of four batteries, off of six batteries, or off of 10 batteries, which is 50 amp hours. If I'm running this off of 10 of these, that's 50 amp hours. That's more than I get out of those little SLA batteries by far. In fact, this would give me more storage power than I get out of my full uh, two, ba two battery, um, 35 amp hour batteries. So, because there I'm only getting 70 acid batteries, you only get about 50% out of them. So, that means that you're really only getting about 35 amps. And I can actually get out of 10 of these things, get up to 50 amps without any problem. Now, economically, having one battery, have one power pack that always ran off of 50 amp hour Ryobi batteries, economically, it's not very smart. Because these things do cost a little bit of money, and it'd be cheaper to buy a 50 amp hour battery lithium probably than to buy 10 of these. But these are multitaskers because I can use them in this power pack, I can use them in my other power pack, and I can use them in all my tools in my shop. So that's the idea about using making this using the same battery that I use all the time anyway. So it makes it really handy for somebody that if you have a little shop. And you also want to be able to have portable power. You can use whatever tool battery you want. You don't. It does not even have to be the Ryobi. Now I'm doing it with the Ryobi because that's what I committed to a long time ago. All my tools and my batteries, and that's all I have here is just Ryobi. And that has been a certain amount of blessing when it comes to tools and that by keeping these charged up. And I always have more batteries than I need, so that I always keep them charged up. It's handy to always be able to have a charged battery when you need it. So, um, but that's the whole idea. I'm going to build these two power packs. It'll give me a much better universal ca capability of using the power pack uh, and be able to use it perpetually. Uh, because I can rotate these, charging them while I'm using them also. Uh, that's it in a nutshell. If you have any questions about this, anything you want to comment on it, any observations, any cautions, just leave them in the comments. I do read them all. Uh, I'm going to go over something else here real quick. Now that I'm kind of explaining what I'm going to be doing here, as soon as I get it done, I'll, I'll show it to you. By then, hopefully this will have the box too. I have the box I'm making over there that this will set into to keep everything covered. Uh, but this is going to be a finished product. Now... In my research of looking at these batteries, I've been trying to find out a couple of things. Like, one of the things that I've never found consistently yet, an absolute, is how much draw can you draw on this battery? What's the maximum draw on this? Now, I think it's around 4 amps. If you're drawing 4 amps for, they would, somebody was using one of these things on a chainsaw out in the forest, and he was cutting some pretty good sized logs, and he said, these things ran both the Ryobi brand and the generic Ryobi battery, which is what I use. I don't use the Ryobi batteries because these cost about a third the price of those. But he ran one of these in his chainsaw and it ran for about four minutes, got warm, and I think it actually was breaking down from some kind of heat sensor probably inside of this on the BMS so that if it starts to overheat, it shuts down. Because after it sat for a couple minutes and he was able to plug it in, then he ran it for two minutes and it popped again. So you have to let it cool off completely if you want to get another four minutes out of it, theoretically. Also, probably every time it pops, it probably weakens it. And sooner or later, you're gonna, it's just going to give up. That sensor is going to break if you keep popping it. So you want to be careful of doing that. But I think that he was, as near as I can tell, that chainsaw... It's a Ryobi chainsaw, the newer one. I think it runs on about 4 amps is the draw on it, if I'm not mistaken. I, again, I couldn't tie that down exactly, but that's what it appears from my research that I've done. So I think this thing will draw about 4 amps without it, and that would be the maximum. Staying under 3 amps, you're probably better off. So that gives me an idea of the limitations on this. But I can draw 3 amps on this battery singly on here 
without any problem and I should be able to still draw power and without overheating it all the way up to that 200 watts I believe so uh, if you know anything about these batteries all information that you would know about it I would appreciate learning about it does seem to have its own BMS but there's some things about it I'm not a hundred percent sure so anyway the other thing I want to talk about real quick is other ideas of how you can use these batteries and other things making your own power pack or run a tool uh, one video I saw in particular if I remember I'll try to leave a link to that video in the description but what he did he had this little cart that ran off a 12 volt battery and his kids would run it and they'd run out of electricity in about a uh, half hour or an hour and then they'd have to wait while he recharged that battery up so what he did is he bought a couple of inexpensive little flashlights like this he ripped the light part off of it took the two wires so that he could now plug his his battery into this and those two wires he used to hook up to the mechanisms to run that uh, little car and then what he could do is they would run on two of these batteries uh, he had them hooked up in parallel it would run on 18 volt batteries and instead of running on 12 volts so it ran faster and the kids seemed to really like it a lot better and he could get about 45 minutes out of a pair of batteries so he has four batteries he's charging two while they're running on two when they run out he switches out the batteries plugs the new the other ones in to recharge and they keep going so he basically is doing what I was talking about doing here to have a perpetual and he was doing that. What I liked about his video is that he used two of these as the way to get here to his motor on his little deal. So basically, you can take something like this and not build your own out of PVC or on a 3D printer like I did here. You replace this piece with one of these. And then you adapt it to however you're using it, whatever place you're using it. So I thought that was a creative way of being able to use your Ryobi batteries and get to that tap into that power without having to build your own little adapter like I have done. I actually like that a lot. Also, I saw one guy out there that did one of these. This is the old 18 volt uh, battery charger for the NICAD batteries. Uh, now you can charge the new NICADs on the new battery charger but you can't charge the lithium batteries on here. So, this thing is actually kind of obsolete. So I thought, well, if I take the guts out of this, I could take everything that's on here and put it to this. And then instead of this being my plug-in, this would be my plug-in for my battery. So what you would end up with is, after I gut it, I would put, like, put this voltmeter right here, so that when this battery is here, you can kind of see that. I would put the battery pack plug-in, the battery bank plug-in over here, put this switch right here, put it on right here, put these two outlets right here, and then any other plug-in I want to put on there I could do. And then this will just get glued to the back side right here so that then this would run be right here and put all that on a little tiny tray and this thing would be a great little unit all to itself instead of building a box like this so I may end up taking one of these and turning it into something like that now I will tell you one of the things I would like to build besides this 200 watt battery pack I think I would like to build a simple one like this so I can plug my battery in and have nothing but USBs on here, including the newest and the most powerful, the USB 3.0C or something, whatever it is. It's hard to keep up with all those. But I'd put the most modern on here. I try to leave space so if I want to hook another one up, I'd be able to hook up a second, another one on here if, I, if, if possible, or over here, so I can add different plugins as it goes along. And have it run off of the Ryobi batteries, but nothing but USBs on it. Simple little unit, no 110 or anything like that. And it should make them something like this a nice little unit for a battery, uh, battery power pack. 
I thought this was really a very clever idea, too. So those are the things that I've kind of seen as I'm looking at stuff. I thought I'd share all this with you. Most importantly, the battery bank is something that I'm going to build here pretty quick. And when I get this built, I'll show you. We'll hook it up, show you how well it works. I'll run some tests on it to see how much longer I can run something instead of running it off of one battery. And I'll also try to work out the idea of being able to rotate batteries in and out of it so that I can keep running this while I'm charging batteries and just rotate them so it never has to stop running it. Big, big advantage over most of those power packs out there that you just buy because you do have to recharge them before you can use them again. And that's a real disadvantage. I don't know why they don't break that out already. I've never seen anybody do it. Where you have a power pack and then you buy your batteries separate and you can just plug them in or hook up several of them like I'm doing here. Because this really adds so much versatile capability to the power pack by being able to build a Ryobi battery bank. So anyway, that's everything I had to talk about. If you have any suggestions, any cautions, any new ideas or any way to make this better, leave it below. If you know where I can find a plug-in that's a stackable plug-in so I could put it on my power pack, on my power banks so that I can plug them into each other then plug it into here so I can hook everything up to one power unit if I want. Um, and then I, it would be nice to be if somebody knew where I can find that. I've been looking around. I just haven't found one that I've been actually wanting to work. Obviously, it's going to have to, I want something that we will be able to take at least 15 amps, I think, when plugged in. And all of this, uh, by the way, all the wiring will all be done with 12 gauge wire so that this will be able to carry the amperage that it potentially can be put through it. And I'll also put fuses strategically to help protect the whole system from burning up. So... Anyway, when I get it done, you can see the whole system, how it works and how it plugs into here. I'll add a plug in on here and we'll go from there. So, and, so any ideas or questions, do leave them below. I got a quick rambling here. So anyway, if you like this video or you learned something here, hit that like button. It lets me know that I'm doing the right thing. Most importantly, though, please come back again because I'm nowhere near done. Ooh. Thanks, and we'll see you guys again very soon. <laughs> Bye.